In this video, we're going to be tackling the leak code question, product of array, except self. So this question can be pretty difficult to understand. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start off small. We're going to start off very simple and we're going to work our way up from there. And the simplest thing that we can do at this point is just calculate the product of the array, except self. How do we do that? Well, I've got a magical block right here, and this magical block is going to block out individual elements in the array. And whatever number that I block out, I need to multiply all of the other numbers. So two times three is equal to six, six times four is equal to 24. Congratulations, we have the first element. Then we're gonna do the exact same thing, but we're going to do it for the second number. So if I can grab my box here, put it over the two, we're going to multiply one times three times four, which is equal to 12. Then we're gonna do the same exact thing for the third number, and we're going to get eight. And the last number is going to be, you guessed it, six, because two times three times one is equal to six. So that's a pretty neat way to calculate the elements in the array, but how exactly are we going to build an algorithm to do that? Just like every other problem on earth, there's multiple ways to achieve the same thing. There's multiple ways to solve this problem. The easiest way is to just multiply every single element and divide it by that element. What exactly do I mean by that? Well, our previous array was one, two, three, four. If we times all of those elements, we get 24. And if we divide it by every single element, we get the result that we want. So 24 divided by one is equal to 24. 24 divided by two is equal to 12. 24 divided by three is equal to eight. And 24 divided by four is equal to six. But the bad thing is, is that leak code will not allow us to use division. We cannot use division to solve this problem. What's another way that we could solve this? We're going to use what's called the two-pass approach, commonly referred to as the left-to-right approach. If you remember back from the very beginning of the video, I had this magical little box that blocks out the numbers that we plan on calculating. And notice something very important. If we want to calculate the elements at the very beginning or the very end, it's very easy to do because the numbers are in line with each other. If we want to calculate the beginning product of array except self, all we have to do is multiply two times three times four. And the same thing can be said for the end. If I want to calculate the ending product of array except self, all that I have to do is multiply three times two times one. But where things get very complicated is when I have numbers on both the left and the right side. Very similar to the beginning and ending elements, we're going to be obtaining the product for all of the elements to the left and all of the elements at the right but with one very important exception. We're going to be using two for loops to iterate to the end and to the beginning of the array. We're going to move forward and then we're going to move backward. And as we move forward, this is where the magic is going to happen. This is where we're going to obtain the product for all of the elements going forward. And then we're going to do the same exact thing as we go backward, but we're going to be obtaining the product for all of the elements to the right but let's go ahead and let's break it down in a real example. So we have the array that we need to do calculations on and because leak code does not specify that we need to do any in place calculations, we're just going to make it easy on ourselves and we're going to create a brand new array to store our answer in. The next thing that we're going to do because this is indeed an algorithm is that we're going to create a for loop that is going to iterate from the front to the back. When we iterate from the front to the back, what we're going to do is we're going to obtain the product, the prefix for every single element as we iterate. As we iterate from left to right, we're going to store the product of all of the numbers to the left. And we're going to store that product in a variable called prefix. The word prefix is sort of just the way that it sounds. It is the prefix of all of the numbers 
before the one. But before we do anything else, we need to make sure that we initialize this prefix as one, because if we initialize it at zero, it's going to cause all of our numbers in our final array to be zero, and we don't want that. Let's go ahead and let's kick off our very first iteration. Remember, we want to calculate the product for all of the numbers before the one. But in this case, there's no other numbers before the one, therefore our very first value, our very first prefix product is going to be one. Before we can move on to the next element in the array, we're going to have to update our new prefix product. And our new prefix product by the time that we get to two is just going to be one. Remember, you need to calculate the new prefix before you go to the next number. And our new prefix, because it's just one, is going to be one. So we're going to update our prefix to one, which is the same number, but it's still technically an update. With our new prefix calculated, we can now move on to the next element, which is going to be two. Because we previously calculated the prefix before we move to the next element, we're just going to take the previous prefix that we calculated and insert it into the next element into the array. But just like before, we have to update our prefix once again. If we take the product of the two and the one, this is going to update our prefix. This is the numbers to the left that we need to obtain before we can move on. And when we update our prefix, it's going to equal two. We can now move on to the next element. When we move to the next element, we're going to take the previous values that we took and we're going to insert them into the next element in the array. And the process is going to repeat. We're going to update our prefix. But we've already calculated the products of all of our previous values. So now all that we need to do is we just need to times the current element by the prefix, which is going to equal six. And we'll update our new prefix with six. And with the prefix updated, we can move on to our next value, or we can insert the previously calculated products, which is equal to six, and calculate our new prefix value. And because the one times two times three has already been calculated, once again, the only thing that we need to do is times our current value within the array times the prefix, which is going to equal 24 but we're already at the end of the array, so the prefix doesn't really matter at this point. What we're going to do now is we're going to create another for loop, and this for loop is going to iterate from the back to the front. And instead of calculating all of the numbers on the left side, we're going to calculate the product of all of the numbers on the right side. And instead of storing the values in the previous piece of state that we used before called the prefix, we're going to initialize a new piece of state. And instead of calling it the prefix, we're going to call it the suffix because we're going to be calculating all of the values after. And these same rules apply. You never want to initialize this value as a zero. You always want to initialize the prefix and the suffix to one. So let's go ahead and let's kick off the iteration. Because there's no values to the right, our current suffix is going to equal one. Therefore, six times one is going to equal six. This number is not going to change. But remember, we still have to update the suffix. And the current product of all of the elements before we reach the three is going to be just this number. Therefore, our suffix is going to equal four. We can now move on to the next value in the array, which is going to equal three. Once we move on to number three, we could finally populate the next value in our array. And this new value is going to be the suffix times the current number, which is going to equal eight. And before we can move on to the next number, we once again need to update our suffix, which is going to equal three times four because our current value is equal to three and we also need to calculate the product of the four 
So our new suffix is going to equal 12. With our new suffix in hand, we can finally move on to the next element, which is going to equal to and update the new value in our array. And one times 12 is equal to 12. Therefore, our new value in the array is going to equal 12. Once again, we must update our new suffix. Because we've calculated the previous products of all of the numbers before, the only thing that we have to do is calculate the current value and times it by the suffix, which is going to equal 24. With our suffix in hand, we can finally move on to the last element. And we populate the final element in our array with the suffix times the current element, which is going to equal 24. Because we've calculated all of the previous values with our current suffix, the only thing that we need to do is times the current number by the suffix, which is going to be, once again, 24. But by that time, we're already at the end of the algorithm. So let's go ahead, let's hop into IntelliJ, and let's code it. First things first, let's go ahead and create a brand new Java class, and we are going to call this solution. This solution class is going to house our method, and this method is going to return an integer array. We'll also name the function product except self, and it's going to take in an integer array called nums. We can't forget our edge cases, so let's go ahead, declare our edge cases. AI is gonna do most of the work for us, and we'll check for null, or if the length is equal to zero. And if either of those trigger, we'll go ahead and return the first element in the array passed to the method. We're gonna do a bit of abstracting. We don't have to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and abstract out the nums.length into an integer variable called n. And also, because we're not modifying in place, we're gonna go ahead and create a brand new array with the nums.length. We are making record time. Now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and declare our state. And the state for this algorithm is going to be our prefix and our suffix. We're going to store them in integer variables. And remember, you always want the prefix and the suffix to be one and never zero. Now that we're done assigning our state, what we're going to do is we're going to create the average run of the mill for loop. And the average run of the mill for loop is just going to iterate from the front of the array to the back of the array. And as we iterate, we're going to be updating each element with the new prefix. But remember, before we start the new iteration, we need to update the prefix by timesing the old prefix by the current number within the array that was passed to us. We are now done iterating from the front to the back. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to work on iterating from the back to the front. And the process is going to be almost the same, except with one exception. Because we're not just updating each element, we currently have new values. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to times each value in the array times the previous suffix. But remember, we must also update the suffix. So we're going to times the previous suffix times the current element within the array. And finally, last but not least, we return the array that we created and we are done with the algorithm. So let's go ahead, grab everything. I'm just gonna go ahead, copy all this. I'm going to get out of full screen mode. So let's go ahead, let's bring this over. I'm going to go ahead, toss the code into the editor and run my test. Hopefully everything comes out good. Thank you, God, everything's accepted. Let's go ahead, hit the submit button. Let's check our time complexity. Time complexity is in and our space complexity is constant. Hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. As always, thank you for watching.